Okay, now let's have a look to some files to play roles in this management of users and group. The first one is etc pass w. From the name, you can guess that passwords are here. And you are not wrong, but passwords are not here. You are not wrong because historically passwords used to be here. And this passwd was the main database for the users on the system. Let's have a quick look. I can say head etc passwd. It says, okay, you have some users here. For example, root user x. This is the placeholder for the password. User ID, main group ID, the name. This is the username. This is the name of the person. Home and shell. If root logins, this will be run as her whole shell. Or let's have a look at the tail of this file. It is a past WT. For example, I'm here, Jody. X is the password placeholder. I will talk about this a little bit later in this session. 1000, 1000, my ID, my main group ID, my name and information. This is that program, add user, which was asking the home number, room number, telephone number. They would merge all of them in this description part. My home and my shell. Here you can see that some of the users, for example, I don't know. Debian GDM. Debian GDM. You know the GDM. Graphical Login Manager. This is the password. Placeholder. Whatever. User ID. Group ID. Name. Home. But the shell is slash bin false. So whenever this user tries to log in. Even if the password is correct, this program will be executed, which is not a shell, so this user cannot like it. This used to be a security bug in some Linuxes in the old, old times. Every user had a login shell without a password, so no X here. It's fun how when you went to cross the X, it will become a lot larger X. No X here. So you were able to try with different services and you might be lucky and log into the system. Nowadays, the users who should not be logged in by anyone have something like this or user spin no login as their shells. So even if you find the password of the mail user and try to log in, this will be executed, which doesn't let you to have a shell or run commands. This is how etc passwd works. But let's talk about this x as my password. In the old, old times, maybe 30 years ago, when first I tried to hacking Unix systems, the actual password was here, believe it or not. Good old days. It was like jody123, which was my password, my ID, blah, blah. So it was enough to check this file and have thousands of passwords and username. They changed it very, very quickly by replacing the password with the hash of that password. For example, MD5 in older times or SHA family in newer times. For example, this one. What? A hash does is you give it one to three and it will spit out a very long string of random looking characters so you cannot say this was one to three the next time user comes logs in gives one to three you feed the one to three to the same uh hashing algorithm and see some blah blah if these blah blahs are same it means this is one to three so it was much much safer you didn't have passwords here. Instead, you had the hash of the passwords. What is the problem? It was easy. The algorithm is known. So just feed it one, two, three and get something. Then check if any of these users has this something. It was still easy to crack. If you are interested in this kind of stuff, you can, for example, check for rainbow password breaking. Uh, so they did. 
another trick. They just put X here, which indicates that password is not here. Password is in etc uh, shadow file. So they moved password to a more secure file. Nowadays, there is a, for example, let's go with tail. It is the shadow file, which contains the actual passwords of the users. For example, Jody's hash is here, plus some strange numbers here, which I will describe you uh, shortly. Why this is more secure? Let's do this. LSLTRH, give me a long format, etc passwd and etc shadow. You can see that on the passwd, I have and everyone has the read access. So I can see other people's users and passwords or their hashes or the X, which is not useful anymore. But on the shadow file, I don't have a read access. So I cannot check other people's shadows. I'm the root users here, user here. That's why you can see other people's shadows. This is cool. But what are those numbers? And you can see some of the users don't doesn't have a password. For example, Prevoxy is a star. So whatever password you provide, when hashed, it will be something random looking like this. It will never be something like this. So no passwords will work correctly. And some users do have an exclamation mark, which, is, which means this user is locked. I will show you. But first, these numbers. These say, for example, this 19,512 says from the 1971st first, these many days has passed when Jody changed his password for the last time. So practically, it, you can calculate when I changed my password lastly. The second one says, if Jody changes his password, these many days should pass before he can change it again. This is zero, so I can change it every. 99999, not a German, a huge number, says after this many days passed from this day, after this date, Jody has to change his password. If you want to force people to change their password every 30 day, change this to 30. And system will tell them seven days before reaching this that change your password, change your password, change your password before I force you. Difficult, I know. Ugly, I know. That's why we have a command which says ch h change h. I can say list for Jody. So it's okay, this is a configuration for Jody. Last time Jody changed his password is this day. It expires. Never. Password inactive, never. Account expires, never. Mean, these are the other ones here. Maximum number of days between password changes is zero. Maximum number of days between password changes is this one. And number of days of warning before password expires is seven. Same as here. If you want to change them, you can say, just change the password for Jati. It says minimum password age. OK, zero. It will ask about all of these data and updates them if needed. You don't need to edit past WD or shadow. To editing past WD, you use the user mode. To edit the shadow, you change your password or use CHH. If you use change age without any parameter, it will show you the general commands possibilities. So. This was cool, I know. We have the same thing, which is etc groups. Same logic, but much simpler for all the groups created. For example, I created my group and changed its ID to 500, so it's here. 
You can see that groups also have passwords, but nobody uses them. Group scanner. This is the ID. The members are Sandy and Jody. New group doesn't have anyone. If you want to edit this file, you should not. You should use user mode, add to the group, my groups, Jody. So Jody will be added here. And these kind of stuff. And same file is there. ETC G shadow for group passwords, but nobody uses them. At the end, let's talk on how to get information about the users. Already you have seen this. Getting the information about Jody's log. We have also the ID command, which shows the my ID's information, the information of my ID. I'm root, so this is my user ID is zero, which equivalents to root. My primary group ID is zero, which is for root, root. And I'm member of the root group and nothing more. Because I'm root, I don't need to be member of anything. But if I do ID of Jadi, you can see that Jadi's user ID is 1000, name is Jadi. Group ID is 1000, it is Jadi. Each user do have a one main group. So when you are changing the main group, you are changing this one. If I create a file, it will be created under this group. But I can be member of other groups too. And as you can see, for example, on dev CD-ROM, most probably if we check, it belongs to the CD-ROM group and I'm member of this group, so I will have access to this. This is how Linux works. There is the last command, get entry, get ent. You should say get entry from where, what. I say get from pastwd, jadi. The line regarding jadi. Instead of gripping for it, do this. Or get ent from the hosts, jadi. There is no jadi in the hosts. Except get local host from hosts. It's kind of a quick lookup in important files. What I didn't show you, and I've told you that I will show you, is locking and unlocking and its usage under the, its result under the shadow. Let's create a new user. User add test tail dash f etc shadow. You can see test is added, but no password exclamation mark. Nothing when hashed will become exclamation mark. So this user cannot lock in. Never. I have to set a password. I will say pass wd test. Change this user's password. One to three, one to three. Now let's have a look. Now this user have a hash here. Okay. So he can lock in. Let's lock it. Let me show it first. What I did with dash F. This is here, right? Now I will do user mode lock test. Now let's have a look at the password. This was when unlocked. This was when it is locked. It will just add one exclamation mark here. So nothing, no hash will be back, will become this because there is an extra exclamation mark here. So no password will work. If you unlock it, this will be removed and the hash is again, the hash of one, two, three, and he can log in using one, two, three. This is how locking and unlocking works. Very easy and very straightforward. And you can see some users do have a, uh, what is this called? Ampersand? Star? Here? So again, it would be impossible for this user to log in because no password when hashed will become this. You have to set a password if you want. And when some are do have a star and ampersand. So, locked and impossible. 
anyway this was all i wanted to show you hope you enjoyed it let's go to the next session i think it's about localization